Let's talk about the pulp and pulpal lesions. Obviously, you cannot take a look at the pulp chamber uh, or pulp canals without images. Um, and there are many dental procedures, procedures I can't do without having images of the pulp. Uh, decay removal, uh, endodontics, root canal treatment, uh, post placement. So um, we're going to look at dental images and look at some pulpal conditions on those. Pulpal sclerosis, a diffuse calcification of the pulps. So take a look at 24 and 25 here and just how very thin the pulp canal or pulp chamber has gotten. Um, and that that's a result of aging. So as we age, the um, pulp chamber narrows. Doesn't really matter, no clinical significance. Um, unless root canal treatment is required, then it's pretty hard to get into those canals, but uh, typically no clinical uh, consideration. Pulpal obliteration is just what it sounds like. The uh, pulp itself is completely obliterated due to calcification or deposition of secondary dentin into the pulp cavity. It looks, when you look at it on an image, it looks like there's just not even a pulp chamber at all. Um, these teeth are non-vital. These teeth are dead. They don't require any kind of treatment. So uh, take a look at this image on the left, tooth eight, um, and here's nine. Eight appears to have no pulp chamber whatsoever, right? It is completely obliterated. Um, in the mouth, now th this image is actually reversed. So in the mouth, the tooth looks discolored, that grayish, uh, brownish discoloration is from pulpal obliteration. Pulp stones, calcifications found in the pulp canals. Um, they're dystrophic calcifications. It's calcification of necrotic tissue, of dead or dying tissue, degenerating tissue. Uh, pulp stones don't require treatment. They cause no symptoms. Um, so let's take a look. We're looking at uh, 27 and 28 here. Do you see these calcifications, these oval calcifications in the pulp chamber, pulp stones, related to trauma, in this case, the trauma of decay, probably long-term decay. Take a look at this tooth, tooth seven, also a pulp stone. We're seeing uh, some other things here as well. Uh, right? External resorption on the roots. So external resorption on seven, external resorption on five. Also a, not an ideal image. We want that canine centered in the PA and standing up and down. So resulting from the pulp um, and, and pulpal necrosis, pulpal death, we are going to see some periapical radiolucencies. The most common cause of pulpal death, the nerve dying, is decay. Um, but trauma can also be a cause. And, and by trauma, I don't necessarily mean uh, getting hit, but hitting the tooth. You know, um, occlusion that's too high for too long is traumatizing to that pulp. Um, Pulpal necrosis is an inflammatory process, um, and it starts to occur in this pulp chamber and travels down the pulp canal to the apical region or periapical region of the tooth. We're going to look at a pulpal or periapical granuloma, a periapical cyst, or a periapical abscess. So these are very commonly seen on dental images, but looking at the image, whether it's a granuloma or a cyst or an abscess, uh, we can't diagnose them on their appearance alone. So we're going to call them periapical radiolucencies. We're not going to say it's a periapical granuloma. Uh, we would have to have microscopic examination to see what kind of cells are in these pulpal radiolucencies, or excuse me, these periapical radiolucencies. So we just say it's a periapical radiolucency. Uh, a periapical granuloma, though, uh, 
um, mass. This is chronically inflamed granulation tissue. It is at the apex of a non-vital tooth, of a dead tooth. Um, this is a result of inflammation, right? Pulpal inflammation. Uh, it might cause a cyst or it might cause an abscess, uh, but typically these are asymptomatic. The patient doesn't know that they're there, but they report, you know, that tooth has been sensitive to temperature for a long time. When you take the image, you're going to see a widened PDL space. Uh, perhaps the lamina dura won't be visible between the root apex and the lesion. Um, how do we treat it? We have root canal treatment. Um, so here we are. Just using this image primarily to show you a widened PDL. Because you can see that, peri that periodontal ligament space looks so very well defined there, right? It is, to me, it is so, it is so very dark and very well defined. That is a widened PDL. Um, again, periapical granuloma, lamina dura not visible between the apex and the lesion. A periapical cyst or a radicular cyst. Uh, under microscope, this lesion has an epithelial lining, again, located at the apex of a non-vital tooth, results from the degeneration of the granuloma, uh, the cystic degeneration of the granuloma. So it started as the periapical granuloma, now it became a cyst. This is the most common of all tooth-related oral cysts. So here's what a periapical or a radicular cyst looks like. This, in this case, very large radiolucency. Um, this tooth has had root canal treatment. Uh, this tooth may need to be retreated endodontically to treat that radicular cyst, or it may need to be removed with cl curatage, cleaning out of the cystic material there. If nothing is done, and again, these are typically asymptomatic, that is simply going to enlarge and continue to destroy the bone. And then a periapical abscess, uh, a collection of pus around the apex of a tooth. Pus is just a collection of dead white blood cells. White blood cells were sent to the area of infection the immune system sends those cells. Eventually, those cells die. Those dead white blood cells are pus. Patients have two kinds of periapical abscesses. One is acute and one is chronic. An acute abscess, that patient is coming to you in pain, in severe pain, intense throbbing pain. They cannot chew on the tooth. Uh, if you touch the tooth, it's very sensitive also sensitive to hot. Um, now, on the image, you might not see anything. A chronic abscess, one that has been there for some time, in fact, the infection, the pus is draining through the bone or through the periodontal ligament space. And because it's not building up, because it's draining, the patient's asymptomatic. Um, but this, in this case, you'll see the radiolucency. So acute periapical abscess, take a look at 230, really large restoration encroaching upon the pulp. Um, patient reports, I can't chew on it. This has pain wakes me up at night. Um, I have hot soup or hot coffee. It, it's so painful and it lingers. Uh, acute periapical abscess. Chronic abscess as, usually asymptomatic, but when you take the image, you're seeing the periapical radiolucency. Those were pulpal abscesses. Now let's go to gum tissue abscesses. So is the abscess, is the infection from the pulp, the nerve of the tooth, or is the infection from the supporting bone, the supporting structures? So this, a periodontal abscess, results from infection within those supporting structures, the periodontal tissues surrounding the tooth. Periodontal abscess appears as a radiolucent area along the lateral aspect of the root. 
Patients with periodontal abscesses won't present with a real, they won't present with real sharp pain. It's just a, it's a low grade, uh, deep throbbing pain. Uh, treatment requires antibiotic treatment, subgingival root planing and scaling, uh, debridement. So take a look at this image 230. In this case, tooth 19, these are periodontal abscesses. So obviously this patient has lots of bone loss and uh, this area has become abscessed over time. In fact, in addition to periapical radiolucencies, there are some common periapical radiopacities. Condensing osteitis, this is a very well-defined radio opacity. Uh, we could call it a focal opacity. These condensing osteitis is seen in, uh, in teeth with long-standing pulpitis, long-standing inflammation of the nerve. So if you can see, we've got a large restoration here um, encroaching on the pulp. So this has inflamed and irritated that pulp for a long time. And so the tooth responded with the condensing osteitis. It's really the most common periapical uh, radiopacity observed in adults. We see it most often in the mandibular molar and again, resulting from a long-term low-grade infection, or excuse me, inflammation, no treatment is necessary. Sclerotic bone, another radiopacity, and in this case, a very well-defined radiopacity. Below the apices of healthy teeth, vital, non-decayed teeth. Unknown cause for these sclerotic bones. They're not attached to the tooth, so you can see the bone separating the apex of the root, then we've got alveolar bone, and then this sclerotic radiopacity. Asymptomatic, patient wouldn't know they had it until you take an image and say, oh, how interesting. Uh, there is some sclerotic bone there. Hypercementosis, excess deposition of cementum on root surfaces may result from super eruption, may result from inflammation or trauma. Tooth's vital, doesn't require any kind of treatment, but take a look at this bicuspid here where the root surface, the cementum has added to the lateral, uh, lateral edges, lateral borders, if you will, of the root. Um, we have hypercementosis. That's the story. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.